day we have no idea what we're doing. It's going to be an experiment at Wendell Honey Farms. Edward, Randy, and Ellie are collecting bees for use in making new nucleus colonies. They require bees that are between 4 and 12 days old because this is the age when bees perform nursing tasks, such as feeding newly hatched larvae. These young bees can be found serving and nursing the larvae in the brood nest. The brood nest is found on the central combs, in the most insulated part of the hive, shielded from the harsh environment. All there is to do now is to transfer these bees, which we have collected, to their new homes. Today, we are making baby nucleus colonies, which are even smaller than our regular nucleus colonies. Action shots that you're looking for today. <laughs> the cold is finally gone. Well, I've been waiting for someone like you to come along. I was going down a road so dark and full of demons, I lost my ground. My heart was stuck in hibernating. Stuck in the ice where there's no feeling So you're probably asking yourself, where do all of these queen cells come from? How does one produce thousands from only a few hives? It all starts with making a hive feel queenless. Here, Randy is removing a separator called a cloak board. It acts not only as a queen excluder trapping the queen below, but once we slide this metal sheet in place, both the queen and her pheromones become excluded. This temporarily makes the upper hive body feel queenless. Knowing that the queen is in the lower hive body, Edward searches for her. He has to find her and put her aside while he works on the hive. As he searches for the queen, he scrapes off unwanted comb from the frames. If left unchecked, this brace comb and drone comb can make your removable frames far less removable as time goes on. There she is with a red dot in the center of the frame. Edward then puts the queen and the comb in his checking box. After placing the queen aside, his next job is to collect a few frames of young nursing bees. He inspects the comb to look for young larvae, which is a clear indicator that the bees on this comb are indeed nursing bees. These bees are shaken into his checking box. He then returns the queen to the lower hive body and shakes the remaining bees into his checking box. Now, putting the checking box containing the nursing bees aside, Edward returns the cloak board with the metal slider inserted. While Edward worked away on the lower hive body, Ellie has been going through the upper hive body cutting queen cells. This is vitally important because if a virgin queen emerges from a pre-existing cell during this process, she will, one by one, murder all your developing cells by she herself cutting each one of them opened. Seems a bit harsh if you ask me, so don't forget this very crucial step. After Ellie has finished removing these pre-existing queen cells, Edward then returns the second hive body to sit atop the cloak board. He then takes his checking box and pours out all the bees collected from the lower hive body on top of the upper hive body. He smokes the bees and allows them time to migrate between the combs. To finish it off, he returns any supers and the lid. Randy is going to the breeder hives in order to collect materials suitable for grafting. I'm going back over there. These so-called materials are simply brood comb. Very nice hive. With an ample supply of young larvae, as older larvae will not work. But before we get excited and start taking combs, we must first find our queen. 
There she is. You'll notice she is marked differently, but it's not as different as it seems. Normally, queens are painted with a solid color that signifies the year they were raised. We add a bullseye pattern to our breeders to separate them from our normal stock. These queens have been selected for mite resistance, honey production, and hygienic behavior. Remember Randy's looking for young larvae because they have not yet been fed bee bread, which is a mix of pollen, honey, and enzymes. Once larvae have been fed bee bread, they are destined to become workers and not queens. A newly hatched larva is fed exclusively royal jelly during the first three days of its development. It is a sweet secretion produced from the glands of the hypopharynx of nurse bees. This is an example of epigenetics, where an external force such as food can alter genetic expression. If I go to your house, Brent, and take your food, what are you gonna do to me? That's the behavior of the bees, you know? They try to sting you, you know? Get outside! Get I got outside and you were not there, so Get. I came back. Get here. Get some. Hey, Randy, this is for you. <laughs> Again, look at that. Where's my hand tool, Brad? I forget inside. Where's my hand tool? Ah. Next, Randy will put completed grafting frames in the hive. Randy starts by removing the supers. He'll be placing the grafting frames in the upper hive body. Remember earlier, we made this hive feel queenless by inserting a cloak board and slider, trapping her and her pheromones below. The bees will now be in red alert and will focus their efforts on raising the larvae in our grafting frames into queens. Randy handles the frame with the cell cup openings facing up. He is very careful not to bump them as the larvae can and will fall out of the cups. He carefully places the frame between the brood and the pollen. After the comb is seated nicely, he gently pushes the combs back together. Be gentle when returning the supers, because even a small bump to the hive can send a vibration strong enough to dislodge a larva from the cup. Isn't that right, Randy? Uh -huh. Yeah. How many boxes here? Two. And the bees is nasty. They are comfortable over there and sitting over there, no, no bees, no sting. I'm not complaining, I'm just telling the truth. I'm dealing with the bees, the, the guys just only deal, dealing the frame. There's no bees inside. Comfortable seat. Bring back again. This is number four. You're, you're blind, that's done. We go over there. Yeah, I thought we'd ready to come and show us where they are. I asked him about that. What? Huh? Okay, that's nice. it. <laughs> Why not? Me? Okay, so you don't want boxes on those? Here, but you go slowly, Juan. You got cells on those. Two. How are you, buddy? Hi, buddy. Why? Pick up my, my legs. It's those like, new stinky boots you got from that guy. Oh, that you that's killed. why? From the guy you killed and stole his boots. I need red tape, buddy. Look, look, see? I put the red tape. New one. So, are we gonna put three on everything? I don't know. That's gonna look like three. It's up to you. In my dreams, happiness is what it seems. Nobody has any needs Nobody has to put a lock on the door Our trust in each other is true And I can see as you were yesterday Tomorrow, five bucks in one high So, ten Running Ah, oh no, look at that girl Running, running Not a rock like one Look at this. They're already up. Huh. And tomorrow is like this. Another one. Yeah, hey. Smoke here. You can help me a little bit. Tomorrow, we're doing 40 hive. So each one have 
five bucks. Smoke a little bit here. So yeah, I need help. The moment of truth. <laughs> so you're done, guys. Edward puts 15 cell cups to each wooden bar. Here's Randy with the grafting materials. He passes them to Ellie and Zalema. Ellie takes care not to take just any larva. Larvae come in an assortment of sizes and you want the smallest, newly hatched. These larvae will be about one to three days old, counting from the day they hatched. Zulema can see the glaze of royal jelly in the cell as the larva adheres to her grafting tool. And with what looks like an easy transfer, she masterfully moves the larva, measuring 1.6 millimeters in length to the cell cup. A task fit for a precise machine or an experienced beekeeper. Ellie then transfers completed bars to a grafting frame where Edward wraps them in a moist towel that protects them from the elements. Come on, girls! Come on. Two, four, five, six, so seven. So is that the one? Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. It's this one. So, so what's the day today? Oh, it's this one. Ah. Uh, it's this one, oh, sorry. Oh. We're gonna stop, we're gonna stop. <laughs> what? Why is this two, eight? Well, I miss one. Doesn't matter, it is. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, we start. Everything is the same, the second bar. Okay, so start in 15. Oh, silly mo. Just one? Yeah. Okay. So you did? 30. 30. 31. In the morning we do the baby nook, we put peace on the baby nook. And good because we have enough peace for everything. And what's good? Yeah, I pay 150 US money and, uh, and for buy this kind of shoes. Only the rich men can buy. It smells nice, like Calvi Clay parfum. No, now we will put the salt on the nook and the baby nook. You okay, come with us, buddy. Ramon writes the queen lineage onto the pallet, taking care to be accurate. 18, not 12, 8, 12, 18. Ramon, you had one job. Mauricio has probably one of the easiest jobs today, but he takes it seriously. We use these queens as spares in case the queens in our larger nucleus colonies get eaten during their mating flight or can't find their way home. Life isn't easy for a bee. Speaking of our large nucleus colonies,
the Virgin. Ho! That's for the very first time. Like a virgin.